Hey guys, welcome back. We're back to addressing the cooling system on the 92 Fox. We're cutting out the lower radiator core today and going to upgrade that. So let's go take a look. I got everything out the way as you can tell. I managed to put the AC condenser up here on a bit of a blanket. The lines flexed luckily enough, the rubber hoses. I didn't have to break the AC system so that was nice. Got everything else out of the way. We've got this lower core uh, which you know, as we previously saw was kind of damaged here. So we're going to go ahead and cut this out here and over here and we're going to replace it with a new bar. I got a pretty nice chromoly bar here from Motion Raceworks. So we're going to make that our new lower radiator mount. And then I've got a hoop bar since there was no crash bar available. And we're going to go ahead and stick that up here. And I thought it would be a good idea to go ahead and bolt this in ahead of time. Just so that if there's any tension between those two frame rails held by this kind of damaged and buckled piece here that it will um, prevent you know a large amount of shifting as this cuts obviously if we were going to do something a lot more intricate we would weld some bracing that's a lot more solid but I don't think it calls for it in this in this case so all right well I'm gonna get to cutting here and uh, we'll, we'll go from there Okay, this is a bit of a mess. So this side, not so bad. Bolts go in, everything looks kind of normal around here. We get to the other side, and clearly this has been hit before in the front here. Well, it's hit something. I can see some shoddy welds over here where they try to straighten this out. I'll weld it back, and some more over here. And then this, they put the wrong threaded bolt in here. And it's not even straight it goes at an angle pointing down and they just cross threaded it and powered it through there and then on the bottom the hole didn't quite line up so they put a smaller bolt in there but it doesn't even catch properly so likely I'm gonna have to drill this out and this one here and to use two slightly longer bolts with a nut on the back and clamp that down so for cutting off the uh, lower core radiator support there's a couple options I'm probably gonna go with an angle grinder this is what I use mostly on just about everything. It's one of my favorite cutting tools. Uh, I might switch to a cutoff wheel uh, depending on what issues I run into. We'll see when we get in there. As far as how far to cut on here, I'm not really 100% sure how far up here I should cut. So likely what I'm going to do is cut a little bit lower and then test fit and work my way up. It's going to be a lot easier to take off additional material than it is to add more metal back on later. how easily that came out. It was just like cutting a pop can out of there. I expected a, I don't know, thicker, harder metal, maybe a thicker wall thickness. I expected a little difficulty. That just came right out like it was nothing. You can see I left a little bit of distance here so we can see how that piece cups on here and if I have to move it up clearance some of this you know according to the radiator height we'll make those changes let's take a look here oh yeah not much of anything this might this may end up going here but I didn't want to prematurely cut it off I'm gonna do a little little test fitting guess I need to go get the radiator we'll get a nice Thick aluminum radiator I picked up at uh, LMR. It's I think it's a three core. I have to go back and look. It's their SBE line. This is going to be the bottom. This is the factory rubber, and this is the a bracket I got here that I'm going to weld onto the Motion Raceworks lower um, tubular bar that we're going to put in there. So this rubber will sit inside of it. See, there's a nub over here, and I'm going to drill a hole through here. That way, this that can go right through there. That'll just prevent the rubber from ever sliding out and then that is going to sit on there like that and keep it in place. So use the upper mount and then we can be able to locate where the bottom should be and that will help us determine what height we need to get that bar to weld it in place. 
I installed the upper mounts with the rubber in there, squared it in there. Now that's looking like a good fitment. Obviously I, I can't put the bar down below the lower radiator piece because the jack's in the way. So my idea now is the jack has it held in place, the brackets are locating it for its position. I'm probably going to drop some thin like nylon rope string through here and, and tie it up so it's essentially hanging from these to locate it. And then I can pull the jack out of the place and then start test fitting the bar up and cutting down these sides. Luckily the, the perches, since I'm welding the perches on that bar that goes under here, I get a little bit of leeway with how I, how I weld them on there. Work even better than I thought it would. All right, let's get to measuring. All right, so taking this measurement over here, with this in here and the and the bar held up, I'm getting about approximately two inches that I'm short that I need to move. When I come up here, and I look at this right here. I have about two inches that I left down here from the bottom of this frame rail line. So it looks like I essentially need to just cut it in line with that frame rail line off there. And then this piece here is going to sit up overlapping the channel here, but it needs to come up almost flush on the bottom here. And that's going to put it right on the bottom of here, two inches. Alright, we have the bar sitting in here. Got it all the way up over here and over here. I've taken the measurements with the radiator and it fits. I also went ahead and put a level across here, this bar here, and of course this one here, to make sure all three were sitting at the exact same angle so everything was kind of true and took a couple cross measurements. I still have to take it off again to clean up to do some welding, um, which brings me to an interesting point. It seemed like a great idea getting a chromoly bar, lightweight, save some, uh, save some weight off the car. But then it occurred to me I've never actually welded chromoly. Oops. So I did a little looking and I called up a buddy as well. And it sounds like it's pretty similar. Uh, preheat the metal first though, it's very brittle and it's, it's very prone to cracking from what I understand. So I'm told go ahead and uh, pull it in somewhere where there's no breezes or any wind or anything. So it cools completely slowly and naturally. Don't wet it, don't put a fan on it or anything like that when trying to cool the weld. Uh, otherwise the chromoly is gonna, gonna likely crack. I also had to go grab two different filler rods, one for welding chromoly to chromoly, uh, like the uh, radiator perches. And then um, where I welded to the frame, that's mild steel to, to uh, chromoly, so a different filler rod for that. Uh, so that's gonna be a little bit of a pain. I gotta get those cars out, get those cars moved, and then get this thing pushed over into the garage area there. And that'll give us a uh, shielding from the breeze and we can get to welding. Okay, well, it was going to be a giant pain to get these cars out. So I pulled the T-top box out and uh, pushed the 92 into its little space, but uh, sudden downpour. So a little hold up and uh, we'll get back to welding. Well, the storm stopped and it's back to hot sunshine again. So let's move on, get back to welding. What I'm going to do here, I think first thing is clean up these areas. I already touched them up um, with wire brush and such and, and cleaned out all the um, paint and corrosion and whatnot. I have clean surfaces to weld on, but I need to clean it up with acetone, get it real nice and clean. Same one here. I need to get this thing, these ends cleaned up. Acetone, I'll get it installed back on here and then we'll start welding. Nice tight fit, but that way I know it doesn't move while I'm trying to weld it or put it in place. It did have some holes on the sides of the bar itself that you could drill through the frame, bolt it in place, and then weld it up or maybe just leave it as a bolt in. I opted to uh, just make it a tighter fit, keep it in place, and just weld the whole thing up. I may just mock the radiator up one more time before final welding. Just in case I haven't installed it quite the same as I did earlier, that would suck. <laughs> 
all three of these tiers at the same angle, so then so that's a good start. Radiator looks good. I think we're good to go. All right, I got my propane torch. I'm gonna go ahead and heat up all the ends where I'm gonna weld, not super heat up, but just kind of warm them over, take the uh, chill out of the metal, so to speak. And then I should be able to uh, start trying to weld it. Find the massive background noise, just a little awesome downpour in the middle of nowhere. Alright, nice welding. So one nice thing I noticed about these brackets for motion raceworks that go on the bottom of that lower radiator core support, this is where the radiator rubber will sit in and the radiator will sit in here, the lower part. It's got a little slot in it over here and they provided this little bracket that goes with it as well. And it's got a little nipple on the top there that slides right into it. And then you can move it back and forth according to, and, and you can see this is where the bar is going to be and that will brace it so you've got a surface to weld down and across to, to strengthen this piece. And they, you know, that's, they went the extra mile and put that little slot in there so you can slide it back and forth according to how you want to position it, which I thought was kind of neat. I got the lower radiator perches mounted, uh, welded onto the bar. That's fairly easy. The next thing is I'm gonna have to build something that comes up and off of here to hold the AC condenser. None of these aftermarket bars seem to include anything like that. And I suppose it's because they're, they're targeted, their target audience is race cars that typically don't have AC and in, in our case we have AC so I'm gonna see what I can fab up to make this work so inspecting the AC condenser mounts these are the upper ones they have a little let's make it the lighting on there it has a little recess in this rubber boot for lack of better terms like a rubber block that's probably better and that sits over the top on there the bottom is something similar it's a big piece like this it's got a little scoop if you will same thing down here, there's a little tab and it sits inside of that block. And then this piece here bolted down to the big thick lower core that we cut out and it would literally rest in there and then the top ones would bolt up and hold it in place from going anywhere. So since this little boot section is actually kind of neat, I think what I'm gonna do is take this as my starting point, cut this flange piece off. So all I'm left is with the, the boot holder piece and we'll just extend out and then weld in those perches. I'll have to figure out the height. And then we should be able to just drop the condenser into it and it should fit. All right. That should be a pretty good bracket. We'll do a little bit more cleanup. That's the idea. The rubber will sit in here. We'll clean this out. And then it'll just weld up against the bar and that'll make a bottom perch. Well, those OC mounts went a lot easier than I thought they would. It's just a perch right here. I th thought it was going to have to come you know, up and extend it and be a lot more complicated, but it's pretty simple. Then this rubber block from the original setup, it goes right in there. That's actually hot. I just welded it, so I'm not going to put it in there, but that'll sit right down in there and the, and the AC condenser will sit right there. So super easy. Here we have the bar painted and all done. Let's take a look at it. Went ahead and threw some black paint on there, just some gloss black to kind of match. Looks pretty good. We got the uh, radiator mount, AC mount, and everything looks good. You'll notice I didn't drill the hole in there for the lower radiator rubber, and that's because one of these was messed up, and I noticed they were different on the bottoms, and I don't know if somebody had switched them out or not, so I was just going to order a couple of new ones. But that is the idea. I'm going to put a hole where it, where it goes, pop it in so it doesn't go anywhere. These have holes already because I reused part of the uh, original factory bracket. So the, the rubber for the AC fits right in there. That looks awesome. AC condenser fits like it was factory. I love it. Everything worked out perfect. Sits in there beautiful. With the old core out, you can really see the problem that I was trying to address. This is one of the perches where the radiator would sit and here's the other one. You can really see that hump in the center that was preventing a, a radiator from sitting in there, causing us to cut it out. So on the uh, next video, we'll go ahead and address the cooling fan situation. 
to go along with a nice new radiator and we'll put a uh, fan speed controller which we'll design and build so that way the fan doesn't just run full speed all the time it just runs as much as it needs and uh, only as fast as it needs so this will be another fun project we'll get that going and integrate it with all of this and wrap up and get the cooling system sorted out